So, yeah. coming in here, we see all this bunker. And we're just gonna drift through this bunker jigging. I'd like to see some more stripers under it. Uh, but let's see. We're gonna be on the port side here, jigging guys. Yeah, it's 32 foot. 49 degrees. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one. I apologize for my voice. It's that time of year. It gets a little hoarse. And I'm sorry for interrupting the action. We're going to get right back to it. But I wanted to take a minute here and discuss a little bit more about establishing a pattern. The last video I spoke a bit about it and you've heard me say patterns before. Establishing a pattern is the most important part of the day. It can be the most important part of an entire season because some of these patterns last and last and last. I'm not going to go out there try to mark a fish on my fish finder and then cast or try to catch that individual fish. A lot of people say after you mark the fish how do you know where that fish is exactly left or right. I don't care. I'm trying to establish a pattern. I want to know why the fish are hanging in a certain area. Striped bass are always in big groups. They're almost never alone. The school may be smaller of course but they're almost never ever alone. If you go to the Bass Pro Shops and look in their big aquarium. If there's two striped bass in there, they're together all the time. That's why they have stripes, you know, like zebras stay together tight. They're always working together. So we can use that against them. You mark one, we know their lots are going to be there, right? So establish our pattern. What are the fish relating to? That's what the pattern is. Find out what they're relating to. Are they relating to the bottom, uh, to water temperature, to current, to structure, to food, maybe a combination of those? If I could find stripers that are relating to food, forage, bait fish, that is money. That is 100% what we're looking for. That's the holy grail right there. You know, I, I will leave fish that are hanging on rocks or a certain structure if I know that I can find fish relating to bait because they're ready to eat. They're there for that specific reason, okay? Deeper fish or fish in other areas without bait fish present might be there for another reason. And I don't want to talk them into, you know, biting if I don't have to, so... Like I said, find them relating to bait, your money. That's what we want, and that's what we're going for. Now, how do we attack this, right? Well, you can attack it many ways. In this situation, we're in open water, lots of big schools. I love the flutter spoon here. This is true for salt and fresh water. Open water, bait, you can find it almost all year round. Easy to find with our side scan, of course. Flutter spoon imitates a dying or struggling bait fish in the school. And when you see striped bass, especially hanging around these schools, they're not going to chase a lively bait fish all day. They're not going to burn that energy. They're looking for an opportunity. Any struggling bait fish, they're going to gobble it up. And if there's a lot of other stripers around, they're not going to wait. Any sign of weakness, they're going to go gobble that fish up. So the flutter spoon is perfect. It imitates a dying or struggling bait fish fluttering to the bottom. If you're good with a slow pitch jig where you work it up, let it drop, work it up, let it drop all the way to the surface, that's also another great way. That's my preferred method. If you have never done a pattern before or established a pattern or fished along a pattern, I'd love to know in the comments if you tried it and it worked for you. I would love to hear about that. So please put them in there. I do try to answer every single comment. I may miss a few, but I do my best to, to check them all. In open water, I will always drift if I can. I like to cover that water, go through all these schools, especially jigging. The fish will actually float with you and actually move right along with you following your spoons. So we cover a lot of water that way. I won't anchor up or use my spot lock on my trolling motor because these fish aren't hanging to the bottom. They're not relating to bottom or structure. They're relating to that bait and the bait is moving. I want to drift along with the bait. If uh, these fish were sitting on a rock pile or something like that, I would anchor up and to try to attack those fish that are sitting still. Probably with cut bait. Uh, number one choice for that would be cut bait if they're sitting in one spot. But I'll also cast too and they'll do other things like that. I hope this video helped you out, guys. I do appreciate you watching and clicking. Please subscribe if you haven't. And hit the like and the bell and all that stuff because it really does help me out. And I do appreciate it. Please stay safe on the water. Love you. Mean it. 49 degrees.
Look at that. All right, put them down. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. They're not at the bottom, guys. They're between 20 and 15 feet. They're right inside the bunker. You're probably gonna start snagging bunker here. Let's test the cam. <laughs> He's hooked up, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, that's a big fish. Aw, oh, son. Are you stop? Dude, that's a motor, that's a freight train. Yeah. <laughs> that fish has other plans. I got news for you. Dude, if it was taking line with he he was in the old hell zone. <laughs> That chartreuse spoon? Oh yeah. That's the first time I put the chartreuse on this to fall, bro. He moved right in for that chartreuse. Nobody wanted it. Look at that. Look at that right there, guys. Double. Double. Yeah, buddy. He moved right in for that chartreuse. Nobody wanted it. Look at that. Nobody wanted it. Here we go. Double. Yeah, buddy. Probably chasing after his, coming for mine. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's working it too. That's the custom value that actually made for me. They put a clicker on there. Really? Doesn't seem to bother the fish. Woo! 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 Oh, <laughs> she's taking it. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Dude, he's got something that's unbelievable. Dude, Mike's got a 30. He's drinking it. You don't want no fight. Yeah. Skippy, sure I'm not What's going on over here, Mike? <laughs> oh, he's not trying to get the net. Dude, he's got a. Dude, he's got some. Oh, Lord. Oh, This? Yeah, it's fallow. Damn. I thought that was a 40. They're 25. Nah. It's a fat fish. Tim, hold this. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. Get a photo of me and Forrest together once we get that out of there. Alright, look at that. That's what I want a picture oh of there. Lord. 
Okay, well. Pretty guy. On the spoon, jigging. Let me start, boys. Pretty guys. On the spoon, jigging. Pretty little good. Good way to start, boys. Thank God for that chartreuse. Thank job. you, Skipper. Sure. Going back. Good job. Back to the depths. Oh, he came up. He just hit it, Sim. He just hit it. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it all happening. I didn't feel it, though. He's looking at it. Hey, come back. You didn't feel it? Good job, a little uh, fun, I guess. There's plenty of fish. They're all coming in looking. You see how you're stopping that spoon at the bottom? Yeah. Don't ever stop it. Don't ever let them get a good look at it. If they look at it, they're going to be gone. It's a chunk of steel. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So as soon as it hits, oh, look, pull look, right look, away. Look, look. Yeah. There we go. He hit it on the way down. He hit it whether you knew it or not. Oh, see. Now, here. yanked him. Yeah, I just got He's hooked up. <laughs> He's hooked up. <laughs> oh, it happened live. Live. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. Right, we got a boy coming up right here, buddy. Okay, Mike, Mike, what just happened is crazy. I've seen guys do it with crappy fish and never with striped bass. Though. Don't break that. Crappy fish. That was crazy. Yeah. Tim, we worked as a team on that one. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> There's someone. Yep. That, that you? There he is. Oh, he went right. Oh, he came back for it. Came back for it. Ready, Tim? See if we can do it again. <laughs> Need a bunker? See if we can do it again. No, nope, we're over school bunker now. If you oh, get no, underneath no, no. it, cool. he's looking at it, Tim. He's following it down. He's following it down. That was crazy. Yes. Tommy's got to go in. Yes. Tommy's far away from the uh, active target. You see your clicker? That one hooked in the tail, Tommy? Yeah. Come on down here so I can get you. Tim's not taking his eye off of that screen. That was crazy. Whacked a nine inch chrome spoon. Get those. That was Mark's. I'm gonna keep him on here so maybe we'll bring some fish. Yeah. Hey boy. Take a chunk right out of the leader. Hold that. Don't drop it. You gotta check that leader. Yeah. 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 Here we go. Michael, pretty. Leader feel alright? Yeah. <laughs>